All right, well, we're going to close the show now with an interesting tech corner, our last segment of the week. Uh, good tech corner for you this time. This uh, is going to be Dirk going to show you uh, the Wave 2 wireless bore gauge and the Merlin Plus uh, SPC equipment from Marpal. So, Dirk, take it away. Yeah, thanks, Mike. Yeah, well, as Mike said, we're going to look at a wireless gauging system today. It's going to involve the iWave iWave 2 uh, wireless bore gauge from Marpos and also the Merlin Plus uh, computer, which is an, uh, an industrial computer. Um, and these work as a wireless system uh, over smart Bluetooth to enable wireless uh, communication. Now, we'll talk about the handle first. This is an IP67 rated handle, which means that if you go out onto the shop floor, you don't have to worry about any uh, oil or water contaminants getting inside the handle and mucking up the electronics. And in order to do that, um, Marpos has done a couple of interesting things with this handle. If we go over to the gauge cam here for a second, take a look at this. Uh, if we look at the gauge cam, uh, ah, there we go. Okay, a uh, couple things make this IP67. One is the switches. Uh, the switches are magnetic switches, meaning there is no contact, no physical contact from the outside of the uh, of the handle to the guts on the inside. It's a magnetic switch, so it just simply works through the plastic of the housing. Uh, furthermore, the battery for the wireless device is completely sealed within the body of the handle, and it is inductively charged, which means there is no need to have a, um, a plug, you know, a jack on the back to plug a charger in or something like that. You would simply put this in the charging cradle. The charging cradle, by the way, is also a storage for your unit, and a full charge gives you 42 hours of operation. Let's look at a couple of econo uh, ergonomic things on this as well. Uh, two switches. The switches operate exactly the same, but there's one at the top, one at the bottom, which means that no matter how I hold the handle, I've got easy access to the switch. Uh, also, the display is like your smartphone display. It is always right reading. So no matter how I tilt the handle, the display will come up right reading. Uh, the display itself is a very bright display. Let me see if I can orient it here. Yeah, there we go, uh, in front of the camera. A very bright, bright 1.8 inch TFT display. A lot of information on it. You notice uh, at the top of the display is the numerical readout. Then you got a bar underneath it which shows you the relationship of the uh, reading to the upper and lower limits. The upper and lower limits are showed there. Green if you're within limits, red if you're without. Go, no go. Uh, units, you know, whether it's uh, millimeters or inches. Uh, type of measurement, absolute or relative, and obviously battery status. So let's talk about wireless here just for a little bit, if we can come back to our main shot. Um, wireless communication is really kind of, and the whole system here is kind of Marpos's. Um, entry, getting their foot into the door of Industry 4.0, which really has an emphasis on connectivity, wireless connectivity, uh, you know, WAN, wireless WAN, uh, data sharing, data uh, availability over the cloud, over a network. And so it's really important that companies be moving forward into uh, kind of the paradigm that's being set up by Industry 4.0. Now, one of the issues that very often happen with a wireless device is they work great as long as they are within range of the base station, of the uh, computer in this case. Problem is once you get outside that range and you break that connectivity, then very often uh, with a lot of products, uh, your measurement uh, device becomes a brick. It's really useless to you. So what Marpos has done is something really clever, I think, is when you are within wireless range of the Merlin Plus and you select your parts program, your measurement program, that measurement program gets uploaded into the handle. All the specs, everything that's necessary to take a measurement is in the handle itself, which means the handle can now work standalone. I can take this out to the shop floor. Everything I need to take measurements is in the handle. I can get away from my base station. I can take measurements and uh, in a variety of ways. I could use it as a simple go, no go gauge, but because all the data is also there, I can do quantitative measurements as well. Uh, the readout is there. Uh, the bar is on there telling me uh, how close I am to my upper and lower limits. So even though I'm within limits, I can tell how close I am. So really, really useful, uh, really useful application to be able to put your parts program and use this standalone and not be tethered, so to speak, by the range of your Wi-Fi. So let's take a look at uh, a, how we might take measurements. So I'm going to go over to my gauge computer here, if we can do a screen share. And I'm going to load up 
a parts program. Now on the parts program screen that we see here, uh, there are dozens of parts programs on here. Just a, a word about parts programs. Right now we're looking at a single gauge. A parts program can look at dozens and dozens of gauges and step the operator through uh, telling them which gauge to use, what measurement to take. Uh, parts programs can be very complex. We're not limited just to one gauge. We can have dozens of wireless gauges out there. But we're going to use a simple parts program. I'm going to go down there and select it. This parts program looks at just one gauge, the one I have here. I'm going to go into measure mode. Now, de the default measure mode is kind of this horizontal layout here. I'm going to be taking four measurements. Uh, you can see them one, two, three, four going down the left hand side of the screen. And normally the, the reading would show up to the right. But I actually prefer this measurement mode better. It's called a synaptic measurement mode. And think of it as guiding the operator through the measurement. So what you have on the screen is a, um, is a picture of the part that we're going to measure and it highlights the first measurement I'm going to take and it steps me through the measurement process. So we're going to do that. I'm going to go ahead and pretend I'm measuring the first bore. So I'm going to click my measurement button once. That tells me I'm ready to take a measurement and then I'll press it a second time. The measurement is taken and notice now that it steps me through to the next bore. I'll take that measurement. I'll take the third measurement and then I'll measure the final bore. Notice when it's done, it tells the operator the piece is good and it now positions them back to start measuring the next part. Now you may have noticed I was clicking twice to take a measurement. Uh, the handle can be configured to, to press a button just doing it this way just because it's, it's a little bit easier, a little bit easier for me. So going back to our screen here again, I'm going to take the measurement again, but this time I'm going to fail it. So we're going to take a first measurement, and that one's good. We're going to take a second measurement. We'll make that one fail. We'll take a third measurement. That passes. Fourth measurement, fourth cylinder. That piece fails. Now notice it comes up and it tells the operator to scrap the part. So with a very visual representation, the operator is stepped through what measurements to take, where to take them, and then the disposition of the part once they're done. Okay, let's take a look now at some of the data that we can look at uh, with the Merlin Plus. So I'm going to show you a couple of analytics that are built into the software. I'm just going to show you a couple. Actually, the Merlin uh, Plus software has several different types of SPC charts and analytics charts that you can bring up and use. Well, I'll just show you a couple ones just to give you a flavor for it. Uh, this obviously is a histogram. If we look in the upper right corner of the screen, we see that so far I have measured 47 parts. So this histogram represents the data distribution of the measurements on those 47 parts. I can now go to a simple SBC chart, which is a single value chart. And again, it shows me an SBC chart of all the data that I've collected so far. And then I can come back to my basic measurement screen there if I want. OK, coming back to our, our main shot here. Um, if I want to, another thing that I can do is I can export all of this data to, um, to another computer. I can do it over a network. I can download it onto a USB stick. So essentially all I have to do is within the Merlin Plus software is drill down to the batch of data that I'm interested in, uh, maybe set up some labels, specify which data I want exported or not exported, save it out as let's say a CSV file, broadcast it over the network to maybe a file server or another computer somewhere where that data can now be uh, brought in and maybe looked at on your favorite SBC software or maybe some other analytics that you want to do with it. Um, because this is essentially a Windows 7 machine, this box, uh, this box is basically just Windows 7 in, in an industrial enclosure. It has all the app, uh, uh, applications and uh, uh, performance things that you would expect from Windows 7, including, let's say, the ability to automatically send out over the network uh, all the data collected from a part or all the data collected from a batch. So at the end of a batch of measurements, that data could be automatically transmitted out over the internet into the cloud, onto a local computer, whatever is necessary. So uh, very useful uh, capabilities by having, rather than a bespoke spot software, you're actually running this on a Windows 7 operating system. So everything you can do on there that you would expect. Let's come back to the gauge cam here for a second. I want to show one last thing. 
Um, actually, I actually want to show a couple things. One thing I didn't do at the beginning of my measurement is actually zero the gauge. And I do want to show that, that it, not only that is something you need to do, that, but it's very easy to do. Typically, before you took a measurement, you would put your, you would put your gauge into your master and simply zero it. And it takes, what, a couple seconds and it's zeroed. So I just wanted to be sure that you saw that. That's something you would always want to do once you're changing the nose piece. So these nose pieces simply unscrew. This obviously is a bore gauge, comes in a variety of sizes. But you can also have uh, plug gauges, depth gauges, taper, uh, cylindricity, ovality. There's a wide variety of, of nose pieces that go into iWave 2. And as you can see, they simply screw in. Then you would snug them up with a little wrench. You're good to go. You would master them, and you would be off and ready to go. So that is the iWave 2 from Marpos, coupled with the Merlin Plus SBC gauging computer. If you want more information on either of these products, there's a link underneath the player page. If you click on that, that'll take you out to the Marpos site, and you can read up more on the iWave 2. So uh, thanks again to the folks at Marpos for sending the system along to us.